Oh baby, oh baby, the sun is setting rapidly. I've got maybe about 45 minutes of sunlight left, so uh, I'm probably gonna finish this workout in the dark. We're doing mile repeats in the Nike Pegasus 35 turbos uh, on pavement. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. And I just wanna mention from the outset that I am not on any uh, regimented or strict training plan right now. When I hopefully run a marathon in 2019, I will definitely be more regimented in my training schedule. However, as my since I'm my own coach, I can do what I want. <laughs> I do what I want, and I can run based on feel. So it's a nice freedom to have as a as a runner to be your own coach. But I also see the benefit of having a coach. Just putting that out there. Okay, yesterday I ran in the Ultra Torrens for the first time ever. My first time in an Ultra shoe, and frankly, the PF feels decent okay now i have not run yet so talk to me in about an hour and a half but they there it feels decent and i will be careful i'm heeding your advice i will be careful on getting into the ultras too quickly uh, i'll take it slow i am a little sore as some of you predicted in my calves based on running in the shoe i know it's i know it's from running in this i did i only did five miles but anyway i'll take it easy and what else back to the topic of pavement why am i doing these mile repeats on pavement essentially i like to do uh, my workouts on the surface that I'm racing on. So in order to get used to a grass cross country course, you wanna do your workouts on grass somewhere. Uh, now, be careful. Don't go out and do mile repeats on pavement. If you are not used to pavement, you will get stress fractures, but I, uh, I'm not gonna do too much today. At least, and I know this is not much, at least three, maybe four, and no more than five mile repeats. And again, I'm just going off a of feel and we'll see how the plantar fasciitis reacts to these mile repeats. Again, Nike Pegasus 35 turbos. Let's do this. Warm up is in the books. Three mile warm up felt pretty good, felt pretty good. By the way, it's 39 degrees today in Denver and that's the coldest day in the last six months. So I'm trying to like, stay loose, keep my legs warm with these Nike tight pants, even though I'm kind of hot actually after that warm up, but like you don't want to be pulling a muscle in cold weather, especially like in a month from now, this temperature will be balmy, like it'll be nice. But when you're just getting your body used to like back to cold running, it's, I've seen a lot of guys uh, pull a hammy, uh, t you know, tight calves when it like the weather goes cold quickly. So anyway, that's why I got the hat on and uh, I'm going to bring the GoPro on the first two. I'm going to leave it on the third, possibly the fourth and then pick it back up on the fifth. So I'm going to bring you guys along for the journey of these mile repeats, depending on how many I end up doing. For the first mile repeat, I'm going to go a little easier. Second, pick it up a little bit. Third should be the hardest. And then the fourth, try and hold on to that hard pace. And then the fifth mile repeat, I'm going to try and float it and relax and not dig too much, just kind of relax it uh, into the finish. So that's kind of my game plan. Okay, now it's time to go, come on. Five fifteen for the first mile. Not too shabby. I feel a little, you know, a little tired from the race and just the cold. You know, you let my legs just don't quite feel as as poppy. But we're good. Let's get her good, and we're gonna do sixty second rest. All right. 
Gotta get back to that starting line. Ooh, baby. Two down, three to go, if I feel good. That last one was 5.18, so three seconds slower than the first one, but slightly uphill, it's all right. All right, this third one, I wanna try and push the hardest, so I'm gonna leave the camera, so my hands are free. I might even leave my gloves, because of course, you get hot when you're running hard. Oh, baby. Whew. All right, minute's almost up, come on. All right, YouTube. One to go, one to go. Uh, sure enough, it got dark out, and so I'm gonna, uh, hold on. I'm gonna put the headlamp on for this last mile repeat. Not for my sake, so I can see, but so cars can see me. All right, let's get this done. Oh man, it's getting cold out. Woo! <sighs> Oh, so cold, so cold YouTube. Oh man. All right, we got her done. <sighs> All right, the keyword, keyword of the day YouTube is the number one for one mile repeats. Number one down in the comments. Thank you so much. Oh man. Oh, that hurt, that hurt. I, uh, I'm gonna talk to you about it back at the house. I gotta warm up. I can't feel my fingers. Woo, baby, let's get good it. To be let's back get at the house. Oh, dinner was so good. It's like after a hard workout, nothing like a good dinner and nothing like a good running shoe. I will talk about the turbo out in the shed, let you know how it performed in the mile repeats and let you know my times for I think the last three mile repeats. But before that, I want to talk about the Torrens, the Ultra Torrens from yesterday's vlog. A lot of thoughts, a lot of opinions. Thank you for sharing your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. That is what it's all about. So if you have any interest in this shoe or any ultra shoe, I would strongly, strongly recommend going to yesterday's vlog and watching and more importantly, reading the comments down below the video about people who have experienced ultra shoes for a long time. This is my first time ever in a zero drop shoe. And yes, I'm heeding your advice about not jumping into this shoe too quickly, meaning going out for too many miles early. Um, so, I, all right, I'm gonna tell you, I'll tell you more out in the shed about how my plantar fasciitis feels. I will say this though, I'm gonna put it on my foot right now as I walk around the house, just to get used to it, just to get used to that zero drop a little bit more. I'll probably wear it for the next hour here in the house, just walking, just walking, no running, no jogging. All right, first, let's talk about the PF. Today, walking around, I was at a two out of 10 on the pain scale. During the workout, I was at a four out of 10. And on the cool down tonight, I was at a five and a half to six out of 10 on the pain scale. But today was frankly the first time in two to three weeks that walking around all day in my Hoka sliders that my PF was not yelling at me. That's interesting. I don't know what it means. I don't know if the Torrens are, I don't know, I don't know. But that's what. That's just the reality is that today for the first time walking around, 
I was not in excruciating. Okay, excruciating is too strong of a word. I was not in, I could not feel the PF walking around today. Two out of 10, like it's, it was very rarely noticeable. So that's good. Progress, right? Progress. All right, enough of the PF. Let's get into the turbo performing at higher speed. And as you probably already know, the Nike Pegasus 35 Turbo replaced the old Cushlon and Zoom Air foam found in the regular Pegasus. Instead, the Turbo's midsole uses a combination of the Zoom X foam and the React foam in order to reduce weight and increase responsiveness. Definitely the new fly mesh upper on the Turbo is, is certainly lighter, way more breathable, and I would say it's probably gonna be even more durable. Now I've only put I believe I have about 40 miles, maybe 45 miles in the turbo at this point. So check back in soon. I'll give my full thoughts, full review on durability. But so far, the upper is performing incredibly well. Now, the turbo does have a 10 millimeter drop from heel to toe. So completely different than the Torin, which I'm standing in right now. Uh, but, oh man, I've got a lot of thoughts on shoes and drops and what that does to your stride. Uh, there's a lot of different opinions out there and theories out there as to which is, no, I don't know if I want to say which is better, but um, anyway, I enjoy the drop. You know, I enjoy the drop. <laughs> I think it helps me move forward because it puts you up, it lifts your heels up and it kind of forces you to catch yourself, if that makes sense. I want to make sure you understand why I did the workout tonight. So I'm getting ready for a turkey trot. It has some prize money at this turkey trot. It's a 5K. I know that some dudes are going to show up that can run 15, 20 for a 5K. I, I just know like whenever there's prize money, there's always a couple guys that are just like, you know, sub 15, 30. So am I that, do I have that kind of speed? Mm, I don't know. I don't know about, I don't know it. Maybe with competition around me, I'm hoping so, but I have to be realistic as well. Anyway, I wanted to get a speed workout in before that 5K, and I'll probably, I'll do one more speed workout next week as well, stay tuned. Essentially, my high school cross country coach loved mile repeats. In fact, my hardest workout, and well, okay, the question of the day. What was your hardest, most difficult speed workout in high school, whether it's track or cross country. Now, if you didn't run cross country or track, that's okay. You could also answer it this way. What has been your most difficult, hardest speed workout since like in the last two years? So just reflect back on your training from high school, from maybe the last two years, like what was a really difficult speed workout that you did? For me in high school, I'll, I'll answer the question of the day. For me in high school, seven by one mile repeats with I believe 90 second rest on a cross country course was definitely the most difficult speed workout that I did all through high school. I mean, seven by one mile repeats for a high schooler. I mean, that's a decent amount of, of speed work. So my coach in, in high school, my cross country coach, like he worked at the prison. He was kind of a drill master and he was not afraid to make us tough. And I think he did make me tough, frankly. Shout out to, uh, to Matt. Thank you, Matt, for making me tough. Essentially, guys, that is the question of the day, and that is why I did mile repeats tonight, is that I kind of like them. I like the distance. Uh, it's an American distance. Sorry to all the UK viewers out there. It's like it's just a good American distance, seven by one mile, although tonight I did five by one mile with, I probably, I said I was going to do 60 second rest, but it was probably closer to 90 second rest because I was talking to you guys on the camera. I digress. I digress. All right, the turbos. Basically, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. They did well. However, my foot, especially my left foot, which is the PF, it felt like I was slapping the ground a little bit. Um, it didn't, I was not rolling from heel to toe. And when I tried to get up on my toes and just do, you know, four foot striking, essentially it felt like I was kind of slapping the ground a little bit. And again, everything I know is connected back to the PF, but uh, anyway, that was one observation that I was making while I was doing the repeats. I could hear the slapping on the pavement. I don't know. I don't know. It's just something that occurred. The reason why I chose to do the workout in this shoe is that it is lightweight and it still has good cushion, good support. Well, okay, not amazing arch support, decent arch support, but good cushion so it could absorb the pounding on the pavement. Now, if you're out there wondering why you should buy this shoe, how you should use the turbo, here it is like really as concise as possible. 
I would not do a track workout in this shoe. You could, you could, but I, it would not be the fastest option. If you are healthy, I would do something lighter. I would do, I would use this shoe again for a road workout. I probably would not necessarily race in this shoe. I think you could go with like the Adidas uh, Boston, the Adi Zero Boston uh, as a, a little bit of a lighter option and a little less uh, cushion underfoot. But for a trainer on pavement and fast, this guy was awesome tonight. Also, when I tried to use this shoe on a recovery day, it did feel a little clunky. Like going slow in this shoe, I'm not sure it makes sense. Like this is, in my opinion, a more of a tempo shoe and or a longer repeat shoe. So today I did mile repeats. I would not do 800 meter repeats in the shoe. Maybe two mile repeats or th someday I want to do 3K repeats getting ready for a marathon. So uh, anyway, that's a couple ideas for as far as how you could use this shoe. And if you're interested in buying it, it's an amazing shoe. I'm just saying it's fast and it has cushion and it's and sorry it's lightweight like it's like it, it's three birds with one stone how you like me now how you like me now did i make the right decision to wear this shoe today yes i did yes i did very pleased for the mile repeats i mean it was it was solid i just got to figure out why i was hearing that slapping sound and like maybe it's all the pf i don't know but uh bottom line very very intrigued by this shoe Thank you guys for being here. Thanks for hitting that keyword, for subscribing, for commenting on the question of the day. And I will see you tomorrow. I am waking up at eh, 4.15 a.m. to go meet a group of runners. Oh, oh, it's going to hurt. Oh, it's going to hurt. But I'll do it for you, and I'll bring the camera. All right. Seek beauty. Work hard. Love each other. We will see you tomorrow. Back inside. I forgot to tell you my times from today. Sorry about that. Just remembered. Uh, five, so this is one through five, here we go. Five, 15, five, 18, five, oh, six, five, 24, five, 17. Capiche? All right, see you tomorrow.